dinosaurs, super cool superheroes, Bullseye, Stags, Spike, and T-Bone, Extinction Stinks, Extreme Dinosaurs, Part Man, Part Dinosaur, cool. Fighting to Stop the Evil Raptor Man, I'll have you for lunch, Eat this, Seat, Claws, Muscles, and Jaws, Extreme Dinosaurs, Seat, Claws, Muscles, and Jaws, Figure Soul separately. Alright, hey guys, and welcome back, as this time I'm taking a look at a prehistoric toy line, the Extreme Dinosaurs. The Extreme Dinosaurs were first released by Mattel as a toy line in 1996, but interestingly enough, they were not originally known as the Extreme Dinosaurs. They originally had their start in an episode of the Street Sharks and were initially called the Dino Avengers. The Extreme Dinosaurs were basically an uninspired clone of the Street Sharks, which was pretty much Mattel's attempt to cashing in on the success of Playmates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which it did fairly well. The toys were very basic and almost identical to the Street Sharks in every way. They were large 5-inch tall figures that came with their own action accessories, and some vehicles were even released later on, however no playsets were ever produced. The same basic story follows as you would expect. Our group of heroes are mutated or affected by some type of radioactive element, giving them incredible powers and intelligence, and are transformed into the extreme dinosaurs who fight the reckless raptors that want to take over the planet and enslave humankind. The extreme dinosaurs team consists of T-Bone, the leader of the extreme dinosaurs, a Tyrannosaurus Rex who always keeps a cool head no matter the situation and makes the raptors run with his earth-shaking Saurian stomp, Spike, a Triceratops who is an expert in the martial arts and also the team's chef. He also likes to spend his spare time in his garden. Stegs, a Stegosaurus who is the team's technology expert and resident scientist. He uses his saw blade attack to tear his enemies to pieces. Bullseye, a pterodactyl whose main weapon is his ear-shattering sonic shockwaves. He's mainly known as the team's fun-loving jokester. Then we have the Reckless Raptors. First we have Bad Rap, a nasty velociraptor with a metal brace that gives him a bad bite. He wants to turn Earth's climate back to the prehistoric era and will stop at nothing to rule the planet. Then we have Hax, Bad Rap's right-hand raptor. A not too bright but ferocious fighter with spinning green blades attached to his wrist ready to slice through his foes. And finally we have Spitor, the brains behind the brawn of the raptors. He has high-pressure nozzles attached to his arms that can dispense all types of toxic and deadly substances to freeze the extreme dinosaurs in their tracks. The extreme dinosaurs had a cartoon that aired on September 1st, 1997, but only lasted for one season before being canceled. Something's really rocking on planet number three. Modern man's got prehistoric company. A colossal fossil view, unlike anything before. Between the reckless raptors and the extreme dinosaurs. Unfortunately, after the show's cancellation, toy sales began to drop off quickly, as well as the following year, consumers began to see them for the quick cash grab they were, not offering anything that hadn't already been done before, and done better, leaving the extreme dinosaurs fossilized. Alright guys, now let's take a look at some of the extreme dinosaurs figures that I have here in my collection. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have a very wide assortment of the figures. Um, I mainly just have um, T-Bone here in three different variants, and then I have one of the Bad Raptors. So let's take a look at uh, all the different T-Bone um, variants that I have here first. So first off we have, this is the original um, T-Bone. And as you can see, these things stand pretty tall. They're pretty similar in size to um, the street sharks. Unfortunately, none of these guys have any of their uh, weapons or accessories. I think they look pretty decent as standalone figures, but I think that another failing that unfortunately the well the street sharks did much better, even though they had a lot of reissues and repaints. These look really, really generic. Like they look good, but you can just tell they just use the same mold and just crank them out over and over and over again. I do think they look good though. The faces are really cartoony. You know, you can move the jaws and everything like that. Um, 
The eyes look good, the teeth look really good. He's got the chains going around the arm. The hands pivot and move around. The arms move up and down. Um, they only really move at the waist. So the legs, you can't move the legs at all. You can just change the position of the waist, you know, like that. But not really too much else in the way of articulation. Uh, he's got his two like talon claws poking through his boots and he's got this padlock and chain going around uh, his like camo pants there and you got these cool stripes and markings on the back and the tail you can rotate the tail so that is one other point of articulation but overall I mean not really much when you think about it you only have you know two four just five points of articulation you can't even move the head and um, I'd really honestly just call it three because you only have the two arms, the two wrists, and then the tail. And I mean, I guess the waist, but still, it doesn't really seem like there's a lot. It's just arms, tail, waist, and that's pretty much it. So that, that kind of stinks. They could have really done a better job with, uh, I don't know, just bringing these characters and figures, you know, to life better. Seeing how, you know, they're quoted as extreme and they're having their weapons and stuff. It just doesn't seem like it translated well over to the figures. But they're really nice to just display, I guess, if you have, like, a lot of, like, dinosaur stuff and you just want to put them near it. Like, if you have a whole bunch of them, they look cool. But by themselves, they don't kind of really look like anything. Um, so let's take a look now at some of the other ones we have here. Now, this is one of the ones I don't have as vehicle, but this is T-Bone. And this is the paint, which looks really, really cool. This looks really nice. This really nice metallic uh, paint here. Um, it's got like this kind of aquamarine and green paint with these different like brown uh, colored spots all over his scales and everything. The blue jaw, the purple tongue, really highlights the big teeth. And uh, really looks cool. This would have been the one that he would have came with his dino chopper. So that was with the, uh, with the motorcycles. Uh, vehicles that they came out for the series. So I don't have the uh, the motorcycle or the dino chopper that he would have had, but this would have been the figure that would have came with that. And I think this is probably my favorite out of the series, just because look at that paint job. That looks amazing. The hands are two-toned, or really three-toned. You think about it, like gold, blue, and green. And there's so much contrast. And even though it's an exact carbon copy of the other figure it still looks really really nice I honestly think that probably should have been the main figure that really stands out and then the third and final um, t-bone version that I have here uh, this is called the war paint version and as you can see along the back here that would be why he has like this tribal war paint on his face and everything so that was like another uh, Another line, you see he's got this other marking on his arm here. Uh, it looks like a sergeant marking or maybe a scar, but kind of hard to tell what that's actually supposed to be. And he's just got the all black uh, camo pants and really looks like he's wearing army boots this time, which is kind of neat. And he's got the, uh, the paint under the eyes and everything. Um, so, I mean, like, I get that that's kind of neat that they were going for that different variant, but it just really seems lazy. Because, I mean, all you did was, at least with this one, with the Dino Chopper, he has that cool metallic paint job. But this is just, it's the same figure, just done three times, and you didn't change that much. He's just now green. Like, the pants are still basically the same, just a darker shade of black instead of, like, the dark kind of navy green black pants. And it's just a different shade of green with some white stripes. Like, that. that is unbelievably lazy. I'm sure he probably came with some different accessories or whatever, but I really don't think that's enough to excuse having so many similar uh, repaints of the exact same figure. That's that's pretty weak. Um, so now here's the only other uh, different figure that I have here, and I really wish that this guy had his accessories because he's uh, one of the Raptors, and this is Hax. So he's, he's really cool. Um, probably my favorite out of the series just because he's, you know, so much different, you know, he's so much different than just my other uh, three variations of T-Bone. And he would have had the, uh, the, the little uh, green claws, like the flip out blades on his arms here, which are missing, which I would have loved to see in those. I think they would have looked really cool. 
And I don't know if you can move them there or if he had others that went also on his legs as well. But he's got this cool metallic uh, shorts that are like stitched up. So you got like this crazy kind of purple fuchsia color there. Uh, he's got this like war paint like marking on the back of his neck. I like the eyes really gives it that raptor look. Those really beady eyes, big sharp teeth. And he's got this cool bolted on razor fin on his back. And uh, he's got this awesome tail. It's like this cybernetic kind of cyborg tail that you can spin around like a drill. And this has all these barbs and razors coming off it. And that looks really, really cool. So just as a standalone figure all by himself, like the way you can position the claws and everything, he, he just looks really cool. I really wish that he had his uh, weapons because he's a really, really nice looking figure. And uh, really looks good, especially the yellow eyes. That just, that really gives off that whole raptor look. So very, very cool. Definitely my favorite um, out of the group that I have here. Although I think this, like I said, is my favorite one as far as T-Bones. I think these two are my favorite out of the ones that I have. But I think overall Hex is probably my favorite out of all of the figures that I have here for the Extreme Dinosaurs. So unfortunately, that's uh, pretty much gonna be it. I don't have any other Extreme Dinosaurs figures to take a look at. I kind of wish I did, had more of a selection to take a look at today, but these are the ones that I have in my collection. So I hope you guys enjoy taking a look today with me at the Extreme Dinosaurs toy line. Uh, definitely leave a comment down below about what you think of these. Uh, did you think they were just a cheap rip off of the Street Sharks? Did you know they were actually called the Dino Avengers uh, before they were called the the uh, Extreme Dinosaurs actually in an episode of the Street Sharks. And what do you think of them overall? So I'll uh, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out the Extreme Dinosaurs with me today. Hope you enjoyed this and learned something. And I will see you guys back here next time. Until then, take care. Hey guys, if you liked the video that you just watched, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. And you can follow me at Facebook at King of Retro or Twitter at hashtag 8 Brian. See you next time.